everyone. Welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith. This is another edition of Rolling on Kickstarter. And first off, I want to apologize because I completely did not do one of these last month. Uh, things got crazy. I had so many uh, videos that I was trying to pump out and do. And then on top of that, uh, we had family vacation coming up. Uh, and it wasn't really family. It was just me and my wife. Uh, but I guess that, that really is family, actually. Um, but it wasn't, it actually didn't include my daughter. So recently we went on a vacation, uh, which is why I went on a little bit of a hiatus for the last uh, week and a half or so. I was able to put out about three unboxing videos during that time to keep you guys entertained. But the purpose of that vacation for me and my wife was to get some time together because once you have a kid, the, those moments are uh, few and far between. It gets a lot harder uh, to have that time, especially to get like seven days of just the two of us. So that's pretty awesome. Um, Overall, I'll just give you guys a quick uh, sum up of the vacation. It went awesome. Uh, we got out of the country, went to Jamaica. Uh, for those of you that didn't know that, uh, we had a blast. Um, it really did help energize and revive me. So I got away from all the board games, stuff like that for seven days, came back, and now I'm just like raring to go again. Um, there's so many games coming out all the time. It's it's kind of crazy keeping on top of all that stuff. Uh, but I knew that this was important to you guys to get you, uh, or at least to pinpoint a couple projects that are currently on Kickstarter uh, midway through September here and just show you uh, maybe some of the ones that you might be interested in. Um, there's And I will say this, there really aren't that many this time around so normally i have maybe eight or ten that i'm telling you about and i might pick three or four that are kind of my picks for the month uh this time i gotta admit it's 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 almost like a nice window it's a nice window of time because um there really isn't a ton of major projects um so there's tons of projects to pick from there's a lot of good ones out there um but it's also kind of a nice it seems to be nice and calm in the kickstarter waters right now um it's not uh it's not crazy not i guess some of the bigger name players that typically show up on kickstarter and uh and and grab most of our wallets uh and empty them um uh, don't seem to be here so there's a few that um are interesting but they're small box games i found there's more small box games this for solo uh for this month that are interesting than anything else there are some bigger ones out there too but uh for this month my eyes on some of the smaller stuff so let's start it off right away so as you can see on the screen here we've got an rpg right off the top so i'm going to skip past that the one i wanted to make mention of for sure right off the bat is set a watch the reason i want to mention it is because i actually did a uh, not only a Kickstarter prototype unboxing on the channel, but I also did a setup and a playthrough for this game. So, if you're uh, familiar with Mike Nate, if you're familiar with um, Rock Manor games in general, uh, there was a game called uh, Maximum Apocalypse, which I did a showcase for on my channel that encompassed a whole wide range of unboxings and setup and rules and a playthrough. <clears throat> this is essentially the next uh, game in line here. Uh, it's uh, the whole premise of this game, essentially, if you're not familiar or haven't seen the videos that I've released for this as a preview, <clears throat> is essentially there is a fire that your group is trying to keep uh, going here. So the uh, it's part of the mechanic of the game makes it really interesting is that you have this you have these rounds you're trying to go through essentially and uh, the brighter your fire is uh, the more wood you can put on your fire the further you can see down the, the enemy line so think of it as if you're camping outside uh, and if you have a very small fire and you hear creatures kind of uh, just behind you in the woods, um, obviously if your fire is not very big, you hear the noises but you can't see what's coming after you. Uh, you don't know if there's a wolf back there, you might hear it but you're not sure. Uh, but if you have a bonfire going on in your campsite, then you can see a little further and you might realize that it's a bear that's actually back there. And so that's kind of the mechanic of the game which is really cool because um, it's thematic. It makes sense. Um, in terms of a fire and things like that. And it also works really well when you're talking about a line of cards that you have to deal with. Now, you'd think that a line of cards that you have to deal with would be kind of boring. You'd think that, okay, so there's a line of enemies, you need to fight them one at a time, and then if you fight them all and you defeat them, you've won that particular round, you move to the next round. 
it's not that simple. Uh, with this one, it is a small box game. There's a lot of content in here, but the purpose of that line is essentially to give you a puzzle. So every single round, you have a puzzle that you're basically trying to solve by using all the unique abilities on each of the different uh, characters that you can be. So you can be, you know, you can see here, you can, it's a cleric, a wizard, a rogue. There's a whole bunch of different things that you can actually, um, you know, be in this uh, particular game. And that's some of the really, really cool stuff uh, about this particular game is that you've got all these different characters. They have all their different abilities, um, but each one's different. And some of them are rolling different dice. You see here that there's like D8s, there's D6s um, and things like that. And of course, when you're rolling these dice, the reason you're rolling them is because you're going to be using those values to try to defeat a certain number on that enemy card to get rid of it. Now, it's not as simple as just, uh, you know, going, okay, well, my, your buddy has an 8, you have a 3, that equals 11, and we need to hit this, this character here at the front of the row that's an 11. You've got melee, you've got range. So there's melee here, there's ranged here. Uh, so basically, melee means you can attack the first card in the line. Ranged means you can attack either the first or the second card in the line. Um, the fire at its brightest can burn three cards for uh, basically allows you to see, I should say, three cards deep into that line. So, in other words, they're flipped up so you can actually see them. So, you can see to the third position, but you technically can't attack to the third position um, unless you have not only uh, ability to use dice from a ranged character, uh, but you got to wait until you've killed the first or second position uh, enemies so that the line moves closer to the fire so that then you're with that they're within range of your arch with your range weapons and your melee weapons so there is um strategy of which ones you kill first there are effects on those uh, monsters that basically will trigger depending on when they're revealed when they're moved from a certain position in the line to the front of the line whether there's uh, it might say something like the um you know it might be a mob of a certain type of you know enemy and it might see something like the health of this particular creature is in, you know it might show five on the card but let's say it you know whatever's next in line adds to its health or something like that so basically you end up playing this weird game of like okay so uh, that card is worth five uh, or is five damage to kill it essentially but the next card down the line that's adding to that health adds another five so now it's ten so you're going okay do i kill the card do i get this uh, that particular card all the way to the first position kill it uh, so or kill the card on the other side of it, I should say, in order to kind of change the health of one of the stronger cards. It probably makes no sense because it's really hard to explain. It's way easier if you go check out my uh, Kickstarter preview because I actually do that in the game. Essentially, there was a particular card that showed up. I think it was five health. I might be wrong. And there was a card behind it, and I think it was super high. It was like 10 or almost 10. So basically, it was like a 15 or health, like a 12 or 15 health care. It made it that one card, like 12 to 15 health, which is crazy high. It would burn most of the dice you have, but the way to com combat it is to let those two cards come down the line, be at the first and second position, and then use your archer who can shoot to the second position to hit that really strong character that's buffing the first one. Uh, you kill that one, then maybe, if you're lucky, the next one in line in the third position might be only like a two or three. So when it shuffles down to the second position, now the first and second position has a five and a three, so now it's only eight to kill it. So it's that kind of mentality, it's that kind of puzzle. You're using a, a certain amount of dice, you only have three per character. It all, again, depends on which characters you pick. You also have this ability where uh, the game forces you to send a character back to camp. So basically, someone always has to go back to camp every single time. And that's this camp board right here. So they got to go back to camp, and there's these little action areas where they can put dice, slot them in to either scout ahead. You can build up the bonfire by chopping wood. They all have different elements of... Uh, of, of uh, effect or bonuses for you guys plus or for your characters or for your party i should say you also have these abilities at the bottom of your card which can only be done if that character is camping every single character needs to camp or go to camp um, and hold down the fort essentially twice inside of the game um, so basically there's an actual token for that because you can't win unless everyone has spent at least two rounds in camp um, so 
if I'm, I, I, it says right here, Sud Watch has played over a series of eight rounds. So of course, the other thing, the other um, uh, crucial thing to this is if you're playing solo, you need to control, you need to control four different characters. So that's, uh, that is one thing you need to know. So it's not gonna be one of those ones you can go, I'm just gonna control one character and play true solo. You need to control four characters. But because you have full control over the mixing and matching of the four characters and how you use them, it's actually kind of nice because you don't have to really argue with anybody or debate over what dice is better to do a certain thing. You can just look at your four characters and go, all right, I want this character to go to camp. I want these two characters to kill this monster. And things pick up really quick in solo because there's no secondary third party, or I should say like second, third, fourth uh, person chatter to try to deter, uh, deter you from doing a certain thing. That you may want to do so that's really cool anyway long story short this game uh, is a very small box game there's not much cool like it's not big you can see it's fairly tiny it's probably about like it's with the size of putting two of your hands together it, it's not it's not a very uh, uh big box but there's a lot of game in there and what's really cool is i think this would be a really fun game to bring camping it's very thematic for that it even like to even just be playing this by the fire would be awesome uh, so this is going to be a game I'm definitely going to be uh, grabbing and I'm definitely going to be playing and, and, and adding to my collection because it's it's rare to get a game that has decent puzzly kind of goodness going on in it um, and allows for a lot of uh, gameplay but also has um, a small footprint and a lot of board games these days are just massive. So anyway there's obviously stretch goals going into this that are going to increase the game make it better. There's, uh, there's this uh, Kickstarter exclusive uh, Bard card which I believe has been unlocked or might be unlocked. So all this information is here on the Kickstarter. So if you are interested in it, then there you go. Uh, so again, that's that's a definite recommendation uh, for me uh, in terms of one that you should look into. Um, I'm just going to go ahead here and make sure that I'm... Yeah, there we go. Back to the room. So that's the first one. And again, like I said, I have videos on my channel. So if you want to check it out further, um, if how I explained it to you just now about the... Uh, First, second, third position thing made no sense. I completely understand. Uh, the videos will clear that up 100%. The next project I want to make mention of is a project from Game on Game. So this is the tiny epic individuals, the guys who love pumping out these tiny epic games. And every single one of them always adds a little bit extra, but the item meeples is something that was introduced in Tiny Epic Quest. This is a really cool implementation to make meeples a little bit more exciting when they're on the board. And as you can see, these mechs are boosted up. You've got meeples literally sitting inside of mechs. I am uh, going to say that uh, the uh, there's always solo play built into these tiny epic games. And there's honestly a lot of game in this box. Um, all these boxes are very small. They're very inexpensive. And I and I've, I haven't had any trouble recommending any of them. Uh, they've all been fun. There's different levels of fun for each one. And it really hinges on two things. One is um, uh, Major's theme. Because they do seem to cover a lot of different themes. They've got zombie. They've got medieval. They've got mechs. They've got western. They've got uh, it, you name it. They, at this point they have quite a few. Um, so that's going to be one of the major driving factors is what is your theme? What are you interested in? Uh, if you're the type of person that just wants to collect all of these to just have every single one available because you love them, then this is going to be a game you want to pick up because it does allow for solo play. Um, I currently own the Western and I own the Quest. And I think I like the Quest better than the Western one, um, but they're both good. Uh, I've heard really good things about Tiny... Uh, about, um, I think it's Tiny Epic Galaxies. I think I've heard that that's a really popular solo one as well. So I missed out. On, I missed the train on that one. Uh, might grab it, you know, from my local store at some point. Um, but this one uh, is one that I would recommend as well. Um, this is one that definitely has solo play built into it. So if you're interested in another, either another Tiny Epic game in your collection and stuff like this, they do build and make sure that the solo play is in from the beginning. They do not tack on their solo play. So that's one thing I do respect from these guys. So that's the second recommendation for me for September. Uh, moving right along to the next one, if I can find it. Uh, Everdell. So... This one's interesting. So originally, uh, Everdell for me was, I was very intrigued. Um, I was very intrigued with Everdell. Uh, and I'm talking about the core of the original base game. Um, but I, I pulled back and it wasn't that I didn't want it. I actually went to Gen Con, of course. You guys might have heard that. I saw Everdell on the table. And I actually love a lot of the games that uh, Sterling Games creates, I believe. If I double check this really quick. They have done... 
Ooh, actually, no, I'm thinking of a different, I'm thinking of a different thing there. Never mind. My mistake. Um, so let me go back here. Okay. So, um, when I was at Gen Con, basically Everdell was set up on the table. Um, it's a very, very nice looking game. Like there's no doubt about it. It's, it's a beautiful game. Uh, the components are cool. Um, I think, for instance, I think the berries in Everdell are squishy. Like, they actually have air inside of them. You can actually squish them. It's, I mean, you're not going to actually squish them. There's no juice inside them. But, like, it's, they just kind of, they went to that level of detail with their components and stuff. At least with those ones. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, I, I can't say whether the game's good or not because I didn't play it at Gen Con. And I haven't played it at all. Um, so, I don't know. Uh, one thing I did hear is that... Um, and one thing that does concern me is I think there is a solo mode built within the base game or it was part of the Kickstarter. I could be totally wrong there. But uh, from what I heard is that it doesn't play as well as the multiplayer. And of course, those are two separate entities. I always think about them separately, multiplayer versus solo. But I, I think this is one of those games where I would... Uh, I think what's what's causing me to be hesitant is when I go and search solo for this particular one, there's not a single mention of solo play in this anywhere. Um, now, if I go players, I don't know if there's a spot here where it mentions how many players are actually uh, involved in this one. Because I, I believe the original... And someone can actually correct me if I'm wrong here, because if I'm wrong, I will admit I'm wrong. Uh, but I swear I took a look through... Uh, the very first um, iteration of Everdell, and I was very, very interested in, in what I think was solo play, but then I ended up finding out that it just, it 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 wasn't what I was I would be looking for, and I got that I got that vibe. Um, but it, as a multiplayer game, I think it's I think people like it a lot. So this is going to be one where I'm going to say do your research. I don't know enough about this one to say that this is going to be good solo. Uh, so if you're looking at this one and you're not sure, don't take my uh, uh, zero knowledge on this particular one as a bad recommendation <laughs> or me saying uh, avoid because uh, I would never I would never say that on any game really unless of course it was something super corrupt <laughs> which we found with that that one project uh, that was out uh, that I forget the one that kind of reminded me of Aladdin I can't remember the name the one that you know the one that uh, that uh, Kickstarter even shut down before it funded like if something like that happens I have no problem speaking up uh, about a corrupt uh, company or, or something like that or a board game thing that's just gone sideways but um, I'm never going to say that uh, if I have a lack of understanding on a certain game I'm never going to tell you not to go ahead and get it it my opinion means zero uh, it really comes down to you uh, you have to decide whether or not what you've seen for the solo play and what you've heard for the solo play works for you uh, I don't know I just don't know enough about this solo mode to know if there even is one or if the core game even bothered to go to the next go to a level that was acceptable with it so do your research on that one check it out for yourself i'll leave that one alone this might be one that i'm i'm gonna probably look into everdell i'll probably play it with friends if i can get my hands on it like if a friend picked it up i'd play it but i, I just don't think i'll ever play that solo even if it has a solo mode it just for some reason i just don't think it'll pan out for me so those are three of the ones i wanted to talk about um the i don't know if there's any more see like i mentioned this time around things are weird because there really isn't that many now there's a lot of games here there's a lot of games um as there are always there's always a lot there's like z war one here this is a one to five player game i do not know these companies i don't have um i'm not familiar with them as much so i can't tell you whether or not um oh yeah i remember this z1 war was cancelled yeah so this one has this one must be the third attempt on this one so that's the thing it's one thing i'll always tell you guys and this doesn't necessarily mean that a game's uh good or bad um and stuff like that it's just like always take a look at the company's prior projects um just because of a prior uh prior uh, project cancels doesn't necessarily mean that the next iteration of it's going to be a bad idea to back um, it could actually, usually between a cancellation, it just means that it wasn't ready enough or it wasn't to the point that people were willing to fund, like to fund it enough. So they came back another time. Um, as you can see with this one here, um, it actually, this one actually was brought to life and successfully funded. I don't know anything about the history of this. I can't tell you whether this was delivered. I can, it's funded. I can't tell you if it was delivered. I'm not going to bother going down that road. Um, 
but in terms of Kickstarter research for yourself, most of you guys are probably savvy enough on Kickstarter to check previous um, projects done by the particular uh, creator and things like that and to be on the lookout for, for that kind of stuff because it is important. You can see now this one's actually doing quite well. There's still 14 days left. It has more backers than, the, than any of its prior iterations and has more money. So obviously the people that backed that second one were happy and are coming back for more and they're adding more to that one. It has a solo option, but I have a ton of miniatures games, so it's not going to uh, fall into my... Uh, kind of wheelhouse horizon zero dawn this one's from the guys at steam forge game so these are the guys that do dark souls the card game dark souls the board game and all that good stuff i don't have either of their products but i like i like the vibe of their company um i don't know enough about their stuff uh the one oh one thing i will say is i did play Resident Evil to the board game at Gen Con. I actually played this one with um, Tristan Hall, so the guy who created uh, Gloom of Killforth and uh, Tears to Many Mothers, if I'm even saying it, I hope that's the name of the game. <laughs> but uh, there's a bunch, he's created a bunch of games and uh, I love his stuff. And he sat down and he was actually really interested in Resident Evil and he got to do a demo and I actually came and met up with him and he happened to be demoing it. So I sat down and watched them play. And you know what? It, it it felt like Resident Evil. They they seem to capture quite well. It's not on Kickstarter anymore. It's already funded. I think it's already in the process of doing its thing. But Steamforge has he's done Dark Souls, Resident Evil, um, and so now they're doing uh, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, and they're doing really well. Like this is extremely uh, being it's, it's being received extremely well. Um, so this game is a solo playable game. This is one where I feel a little bad because I should have done some research, but I will blame it on the fact that I got back from vacation and didn't really get a chance to dive into this one. This is what I'm going to leave for you guys to check out, but I wanted to highlight it for you, let you know that it's there. If you're looking for a miniatures game, this looks interesting. Um, it certainly looks like the box is ridiculously massive. Um, I, if that's the base game box, that's scary. <clears throat> that could be... That I guess it is. That's... That's madness. That's the limited edition box is what I'm reading there. That's crazy. So there's a pledge here that gets you... Th oh, maybe what it is is it's a box that houses the three black boxes. That would make more sense storage-wise. So I could. It, it may not be four boxes. It might be these three go into it. I don't know. But at the end of the day, if you're looking for a game that has miniatures and things like that, and that's something that you lack in your collection, and you're looking for a solo game, take a look at this. See what you think about it. I don't have an opinion yet. I don't know anything about it. it has some interesting looking miniatures. That's about all I can say. Um, and it, it is very popular. So it's it's uh, it's definitely definitely got a lot of people uh, interested in it. So. There we go. Look at that. Can I play this solo? Absolutely. So um, that's that's obviously something that people are interested in. And so for that, again, I can't give you any information on it. But hey, I'm just pointing out stuff that uh, this is where my eyes kind of gravitate towards when I'm when I'm ripping through uh, Kickstarter at times. So um, again, one other thing I want to make mention of, guys, whenever I'm doing this rolling Kickstarter, I always go through Kickstarter prior to filming this and pick out games that I want to mention and, and talk to you guys about. But it is very possible <clears throat> with the mass amount of games that are coming out all the time on Kickstarter that I miss something. There might be something that you guys have found that I don't even mention, I skip over. Um, it does not in any way mean that I uh, you know, wouldn't like it or I wouldn't recommend it or wouldn't uh, even give it um, the time of day. Uh, it's simply just that like, there's a lot of projects on Kickstarter and so you may have heard of something uh, through the grapevine that is really cool. If you have, please comment down below and let us know because if there is a solo game out there that uh, either I'm not aware of or the community here at Rolling Soul is not aware of, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with pointing out a solo game, a solo project for people to look into. So please do that because uh, I think that would help other people. Um, I don't think, I think that's it. Actually, I went through here and I think I covered all the ones that I wanted to talk about. There's a whole bunch of other stuff in here going on. There's like tables and stuff like this. But to, like I said before at the beginning of this video, this is a very quiet month. It's very quiet. Normally, I'm like, this is the big project. This is the one that's crazy popular. Like There really isn't a big, crazy project. The craziest project in money terms probably is that Horizon Zero Dawn one. Um, and of course the tiny epic mechs and set of watch are also interesting so i think those are the three 
that uh, kind of have my my eyes right now. Um, and again, there could be others that I'm missing. So hopefully, guys, this helps. Uh, and of course, going into October, there's going to be a whole run of other stuff. There's going to be stuff that releases even from mid-September all the way up to mid-October. So I will be doing another Rolling on Kickstarter then. And of course, I will have actually been present in, uh, uh, in not on vacation in order to kind of get up to speed with the projects that are going on. So I'll have even more for you for the next uh, iteration of this uh, kick, Rolling on Kickstarter. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I, I have a blast doing this. I think it's always fun to just kind of rip through Kickstarter and talk about some of the games, give you guys some of my thoughts. And I also even though I'm just talking to myself as I film this, I really want to hear what you guys think about this stuff. What do you think about Set of Watch? What do you think about Epic, uh, Tiny Epic Mechs, Horizon Zero Dawn, any of the projects that I mentioned or didn't mention? Let me know in the comments below what you're backing, what you think is cool, that kind of thing. Let's get a conversation started in the community to kind of, you know, like... Um, shed some light on some of the great projects that are going on here so thank you so much for watching and as always keep on rolling solo <laughs>